Hey everyone and welcome to the video. So today what I wanted to do was just do a follow-up on my LG SN11 RG soundbar. So I've had this for a couple of months now. Um, probably I think I've got it around about Black Friday. Um, so it's probably been about three months of usage now and basically it's had a lot of usage as well. And in that time basically I've learned a few things and I've had obviously a few things that have actually changed from the way that I used to use my SL10YG, which was the 2019 model, and the SN11RG is the 2020 model. Firstly, um, AI room calibration. Originally, I did actually use this and I, I had it in place. During some testing, I actually disabled it, and basically after watching a few movies with it disabled, um, I've actually come to the conclusion that I, it, for me anyway, it is a lot better with that disabled. Uh, main reason is basically your bass reproduction is a lot better. Compared to the SL10YG, the, the bass on this whole system is very different. Obviously, it's, it's exactly the same sub, but in terms of the, the use of that sub, um, this seems a lot more boomy, um, and it also seems a lot more dulled down, especially if you use the AI room calibration. Um, and what I found was I was having to adjust the subwoofer depending on what type of content I watched. So for example, most Dolby Atmos content, uh, anything that you stream through Apple TV+, Plus, uh, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, um, and also I don't think there's much Atmos content on Prime, but if there was, a similar thing with that. Um, but basically what I was finding was that the bass and everything was very good in Atmos content. Um, but when I switched to just general 5.1 or even just normal 2.1 2 content, um, the bass was pretty much non-existent. Um, and I was having to crank that up and basically make loads of adjustments. Right now, basically what I have it on is three for the subwoofer, three for the center speaker, and similar thing with the rears as well. I've actually, it's rears and uh, side speakers. I've turned those down as well. So they're down to, I believe it's two at the moment. And what that does is it gives me the perfect blend between having having you sort of appear in the middle of the content, which is basically where I end up. So obviously we've got the TV behind me. Um, I generally sit basically where this camera is. So the sofa that's at the back of the room, we pull that away from the wall um, just to give some separation between that and the, the rear speakers. Um, and basically both of those are angled in. So basically I get the perfect position essentially. So <laughs> seeing as I paid the money, I get I get the perfect seat. Um, obviously straight on in terms of the TV behind me, in the middle. And the one sort of slight, um, slight downside is because of where my door is. So my door is just off to the side there. And obviously just behind you, either side just there, I have my rear speakers. And because of that, obviously I can't take the uh, left rear all the way out. So I can't have an even, even distance between them. Um, and this system, unfortunately, doesn't give you the option in turning one speaker down and one turning one speaker up. So it literally lets you adjust the rears as a pair. Um, in terms of your rear sound, ear level, and then your rear height channels. So basically it doesn't separate left and right. With everything else turned down to two, um, what I get is basically in any Dolby Atmos content, um, it is very evident. So you will get sounds coming from the height channels. And um, a good example uh, recently that I watched was One Division episode four. So that was the first bit of content where I've watched where, and generally Disney's sort of uh, streaming service as well as Apple's are probably probably the best in terms of audio. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing another series where I actually delve into just movies and TV shows that are worth watching for either the visual or audio side of things. Um, but, but yeah, One Division was one of the best in terms of it was the first time where I actually had separation go from the front height channels all the way to the rear height channels, uh, where something was flying over the top of you and you, you could actually tell that it was going from the front of the room to the back of the room. Otherwise, normally all you, all you tend to get is you hear it above you, but there's, there's no sort of movement. There's, um, it's, it's basically just in a sort of area above your head. Um, and the one thing that I did notice with, with having the high channels, especially having them turned above three for anything, we'll discuss 5.1 and HD uh, 2.1 content a little later, but for Dolby Atmos content, for, for most good streams, um, if you pour it above three, what you end up with is 
this really sort of tinny fake sounding high channel so it almost sounds like something is ripping through the ceiling so the best example i can give you is in avengers endgame the scene where everybody bat the battle scene at the end basically where thanos has come down with his army um, and there's a scene where um, he st starts to shoot uh, basically lightning bolts from his ship and when those bolts are firing down what you end up with is you get separation in terms of left and right and well you get separation in terms of where it's coming from so for example you can tell whether it's from the left side of the room or the right side of the room and you can tell whether it's from the front or the back but what you also got was it was almost like a screeching type of sound where it's almost too high pitched everything is too over emphasized so by bringing those down to two it actually made it sound a lot more natural and it allowed you to actually get that uh, the sort of panning that you, you would normally get with something like that um, if you think of raindrops falling or, or I don't know uh, lightning bolts or anything like that where something is traveling it not straight down then you're going to get that slight panning from left to right and that's what you get with having those settings so basically um, height rear channels side channels all on two and the only thing that is on three was center speaker and the subwoofer now as I said Dolby Atmos content on those two streaming services, so for Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus, very good. Netflix, on the other hand, is a bit of hit and miss. So, um, prime example for anybody out there that hasn't watched Six Underground, um, if you think your system isn't capable of bass, watch that movie. And what you'll probably find is because Netflix has cranked up the gain so much in that particular movie, is you'll just be flooded with bass and you'll actually end up turning your, your bass down as a result of that. So um, Netflix can be a little hit, hit and miss. Um, Snowpiercer is a very good example where the tannoy sound that you get from, obviously from, from the tannoy whenever you're on the train, um, that's actually very, very good. So it's, it is a little hit and miss, but once again, it is a little artificial sounding and basically it just doesn't come across as... Um, as being pure, it's, it, everything else sounds very crisp, very very accurate. Whereas the the high channels, they just sound really fake, essentially, and um, they lack any type of um, mid tones. Essentially, it's it's all high pitched, um, and then obviously your 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 sub kind of gives you any low end rumble. But basically, the mid tones. And I realize obviously the sub does most of the work in, in this system anyway, but in comparison to, to every other type of content, um, it's obviously not, something's not quite right with the way Netflix does certain things. And um, it's, it's obviously more appealing when, when people watch movies on Netflix and you've got bass kicking through. Obviously people, people like bass for that reason, but it's, if it's not accurate, then by the end of the movie or the TV show, it literally just gives you a headache. Um, so yeah, so that side of things, Dolby Atmos side of things, um, having AI room calibration disabled is actually a lot better for me. And what I also found was you also got very muddy um, center channel with AI room calibration on. So the idea between AI room calibration is it's meant to focus everything and kind of get rid of any sort of dead areas in your room. But by doing so, what it was essentially doing was drowning out the center channel. And considering this is a, it's got a dedicated center channel with two woofers and I believe a separate tweeter as well. Um, you should never be getting muddy sort of center channel using this particular system. So yeah, that that's for me, AI room calibration, disable it, uh, and you'll probably find it's better. For 5.1 and 2.1 uh, content, generally what I find is the volume on the soundbar, I have to increase a lot more. So with Dolby Atmos content, generally I can only take it to 20. That's probably the maximum, and it's literally shaking the whole room, and all of your sounds, your, 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 your vocals, everything is to the point where it's, it's like being in the cinema, so it's really, really loud without being overpowering. Um, if I was to port Dolby Atmos content to 22, for example, that would be just too loud. And like I say, it'd give you a headache by the end of the movie. 5.1 and 2.1 content, on the other hand, is a different matter. So for that, generally, I have to actually keep it between, say, 22 and the maximum I, I ever remember doing was 24 in one particular movie. 
I believe that was uh, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime for me personally, although it may differ for other people, but for me personally, it's actually the worst out of the four streaming services that we have here in the UK. So we have Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Apple TV Plus. They're the four, four main ones that we actually have. And for me, the quality from Amazon Prime is probably the worst out, out of the lot. Um, and obviously you, you also have the thing where you still have to pay for, for rentals and certain titles aren't free. But if you were looking for more older sort of content, then obviously I get it free. Um, I get it for the deliveries. So that, that's all I really want it for. So the fact that you get the videos and everything else with it, that's literally just a bonus. But yeah, I've, I found for 5.1 and 2.1 content, I do have to turn the volume up a bit. Now, I don't have to actually make any adjustments uh, for the most part on any of my other settings. Um, I think there was maybe one or two movies a long time ago, maybe a couple of months ago, where I had to make a few adjustments mid-movie, uh, but since then everything has kind of settled down. And talking about set settling down, the other thing that I have noticed is with this system, your subwoofer placement is a lot more important. So normally bass frequencies, it doesn't matter where you put your subs, bass frequencies um, are mono essentially. So they will bounce around the room, they're not directional. So as long as you're getting the feel, you're getting the kick and you can feel the bass, it doesn't really matter that much where you put the, the subwoofer. But with this system, for those of you who repeatedly have posted in the comments that you've got no bass, um, put it at the front of the room. So what I do is, my sub is literally just down there. So what I do is, for any movies, we'll, we'll pull the sub out and I'll have it just down there and I'll have it facing uh, towards the back of the room. Because that way the, the bass will travel the furthest before it rebounds off anything and you start to get that booming sound. Um, the other thing to remember that it is, it is a ported subwoofer as well. Whilst um, I don't think there's an off the shelf option, you could probably shop around and try and find a port for the back of it and plug that. And what that will probably do is it'll probably end up giving you a lot more punchy bass. The only thing I would say if you did do that would be to just keep an eye on your levels and probably bring it down rather than being positive two or positive three, probably bring it down to maybe negative two, three and obviously monitor it because if you're not getting that release of the pressure, then you do risk obviously damaging damaging the sub that way if it's not designed to be both ported and sealed. Um, but yeah, that, that is an option for those of you out there that know what you're doing when it comes to subwoofers. Uh, subwoofer placement, as I said, put it uh, facing facing you essentially. So for, for me and for my room, it essentially means facing the back of the room. So then it's basically hitting me direct head on because I prefer the bass more than everybody else. My missus normally complains about it. So normally it's actually kicking towards her side of the room. So this way it's just, it's just easier. The other thing that I did notice was, I don't know whether it's a case of these were rushed or something, but I've noticed that once it's actually settled, um, and bedded in, the sub has actually sounded a lot better. And what I have noticed is over the past couple of months, the sound has actually improved um, just through usage, more, more so than anything else. Now, obviously we've, we've watched a variety of different content. Um, I don't use it for music, so I can't really comment on the music side of things. But for movies, um, I've, I really have no complaints with this system. At first, yes, it was, it was very strange in terms of your rears, as well as the subwoofer because the rears I had to bring down quite a bit in order to sort of separate the height channels otherwise you were just getting this sort of muddy rear sound where your height and your rears were basically almost right next to each other in comparison to what uh, how I had the SPK8 uh, 8S set up on the SL10YG which is the the 7.1.2 uh, setup um, because that didn't have high channels, obviously it didn't matter how high I mounted the, the rear speakers, it was literally just firing towards the front of the room, whereas with this it's firing up and as well as forward. So yeah, the rear speakers I had to bring down quite a bit, the subwoofer initially, obviously I did used to bring it out for virtually every movie, now I can actually get away with leaving it where it is, apart from if we're watching something something a bit special. So whenever any blockbuster comes out or anything like that that we're, we're watching, then generally I'll have everything set up because I want to enjoy that. If it's literally just a, a Friday night movie, just whatever we can find, then probably wouldn't be too fussed about it. I do I do try and do it, but it's just a case of remembering to do it. So yeah, there, there was that. 
Now, coming on to a few questions that I've had from some some of the subscribers to the channel, um, one of the latest ones was somebody's actually got a previous, I believe it was an SK10, I'm not sure the designation at the end of it, it's not going to be YG, it'll be something else, but the SK10, which is the 2018 uh, soundbar, so I believe that was still a 5.1.2 originally as well, and then you had the option of the rear speakers, and this person, they did have the rear speakers, and the question was whether you can actually just add the rears that I've actually got, or any any other rear speakers essentially, and up it from a 7.1.2 to a 7.1.4 system, so basically the same as what I've got here. And the answer to that question is no. And the reason for that is no matter what you do, the soundbar would still only recognize uh, a maximum of seven, seven uh, ear level channels, one subwoofer, so you can't even pair it with uh, dual subs, and it will only recognize two high channels, so it'll only give you fronts. The soundbar itself cannot process um, or was, was not set up, and you'll see this if you go to the uh, LG Wi-Fi app. In that app, it actually gives you the information in terms of all of your height channels, your, your side channels, your, your, your center channel, make all your adjustments, everything like that. And there will be no option for rear height channels, whereas on mine, it does give you the option for rear height channels. So no matter what you do, you can't adapt anything older than the SN11 RG, which was the 2020 model, to a 7.1.4. And even if you could, I don't think it would be worth it. Uh, main reason I actually went for this particular system over the SL, SL10YG, which is what I had previously, was the rear speakers on this are considerably bigger, so that they actually produce much louder sound, um, and obviously it gives you a much better sound stage. Uh, the SPK8S, while they worked, apart from Dolby Atmos content, so apart from the odd movies and odd TV shows that I watched, there was very little that actually had obvious rear sound coming towards you. Um, basically, you had to have them cranked all the way up, just to be able to hear something from them and for the most part all you would get would be small crackles and um, sort of pin drop type sounds it's it's very hard to discern that especially if you're not sat central in the room so for anybody on the sides generally they weren't getting the effect that i was actually getting being sat in the same position that i actually had and even then my experience wasn't brilliant it wasn't terrible obviously you could hear the the rears but it was only in certain content where it was actually utilized fully whereas these they literally blow you away like if if you don't turn these down these will be as loud as the soundbar so that's basically where you can you can literally have it so then if you turn everything up you and you're sat towards the rear of the room you will hear the rears more than you will hear the fronts whereas with the spk 8s you that you had no chance of that happening you could have them cranked f fully and basically you'd still get most of your sound from the front of the room. So in terms of envelopment, obviously this is much better. You just have to be a lot more careful um, because you can go down, you can have the tendency to try and crank everything up to, to give you the best experience, but you, you then end up unbalanced essentially. So if you're too far back in the room, and especially for those who don't have separation, so a lot of people what they'll do is they'll just have it on a... Uh, a table or um, just literally sat on top of the the sofa whenever they're using uh, the system and in that sort of example these these would be way too loud um, you'd have to be going into the the minus level on the adjustment in order to turn these down enough to be able to get uh, your fronts to actually uh, play anything and have that uh, project fall forward enough. Uh, the other thing would be f that wouldn't actually be the ideal setup in my experience you need you need a little bit of separation, at least I'd say about a meter between your scene position and whichever uh, rear speakers you're, you're, you're essentially either side of. Um, ideally, you want to always be in the middle, but as with this room, you can't always have that, especially if you've got more people um, that are actually viewing it. Yeah, so that was basically the main sort of um, gist behind what I wanted to get across, and hopefully some of you guys out there that are either looking at this system, already have it, or even looking at any of the future systems, because given that we're already in February, I believe normally around April, March, April time, is when they normally debut their new systems for the, the coming year. Um, the problem with LG, especially in the UK, is most of their stuff doesn't come out till very late in the year. So obviously I, I got this last Black Friday, and obviously I only went for it because it was a very, very good deal ordinarily these retail for i believe it's around 1500 i picked these up for i think it was about 750 or, or 800 pounds 
and then I actually managed to sell my existing system for 600. So in all, these only actually cost me 200 pounds and basically I've gone from a sample 1.2 to a sample 1.4 with a much better sound stage. And as I say, it does take a little time. It takes a lot of tuning and um, setup in terms of your room. And that's why I wouldn't recommend anybody to just blanket copy my settings. What I will probably do is I'll probably do a community post and I'll probably post my settings um, or I'll just put them in the description below of this particular video. But I wouldn't recommend anybody out there to literally just blanket copy them. Adjust it depending on your room um, and your seating position. And hopefully that should actually benefit you and give you a much better uh, experience whenever you're using this system or any future systems like this. That's it for this video. As always, it's, it's gone on for quite a long time. Um, so I'll, I'll wrap it up now. As always, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. If you have enjoyed this video, obviously give us a thumbs up and also hit that bell icon. That way you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. And other than that, thanks very much for watching. <music>